again. I'm Brandis Daniel, the CEO and founder of Harlem's Fashion Row. And I am so excited to have with me Steph Diedrich, who is the Partnerships Lead of YouTube Fashion and Beauty. Welcome, Steph. Hello. Great to see you again, Brandis. And I'm happy to be here and um, be a part of this event. Well, I'm so excited for you to be here. Students, you are in for such a treat because we're going to get the inside scoop on how you can get an internship with Google, who owns YouTube, right? Or, or YouTube. So, um, Steph, thank you so much for agreeing to be here again. So, what positions? I want to think about, because oftentimes, right, we think about, oh, I need to like have all this tech background in order to apply for an internship at like a Google or YouTube. Um, but what positions are available that people don't commonly talk about? Yeah, that, that's a great question. So I work at YouTube, which as you said, is owned by the larger company, Google. And before I got into the tech space, I thought, Tech equals engineering. If I don't know how to code, there isn't a job for me. And of course, engineering is, that's gonna be the foundation of all of these companies, but that doesn't mean you need to know how to code to work in tech. I can't code and I've you know worked in tech for a while. Um, so there's roles across program management, product partnerships, um, content partnerships, which is what I do, bringing great content, helping bring great fashion and beauty and style content to YouTube or things related to fostering communities across the world or advancing diversity. So how I, would, how I would think about it is, think about all the things you do in your daily life that are supported by technology, whether that's listening to music or reading something online. And if you look into that and think about it through that lens, there's likely a job that's not engineering related to bringing that to life. And it could be something you're incredibly passionate about. So that's where I would start. And that's um, how to start thinking about those cool jobs in tech, but that aren't engineering focused. I love that. That gives them a whole lot to think about, right? So what does YouTube look for in potential candidates and what skills or traits stick out in the recruiting process? Yeah, that, that's a great question as well. So I, I will say I, I lead partnerships. I'm not a recruiter. So there's official guidance on like the interview process and the available opportunities at careers google.com which we can link out or you can follow there um, however i have been at the company for a while and i've been on both sides of the interview process and if i could boil down what we're looking for um, to its elements it's that google wants to understand who you are and how you think um, those are the important things so of course there's going to be some aspect of hard skills and abilities that are required to do the job but beyond that we're really looking to understand in this interview process and with candidates, how do you solve problems and handle challenges um, that we don't even know will exist yet? Because if you think about how tech has changed the world in the last 10 years, there are things that we couldn't have forecasted that now are you know, issues that are coming up in the day to day. So really what we want to know is do you how do you think and solve problems because we can't predict you know what's going to happen but if we know you're a great problem solver and i'll say a great communicator um, your skill set's always going to be relevant so um, if you think about it through that lens like read what's on careers.google.com but really look to bring that into the forefront because that's what our interviews are geared around and really what jumps out when we talk to great people um, to bring them on and, and work with us Love to know. So when I think about it as an entrepreneur and how do I like really think and get better with problem solving, one of the things that helped me is listening to certain podcasts, right? So I listen to like Masters of Scale. That's one of my favorites. Um, yeah. How I built this. Are there some kind of tangible things you can give students that they can like podcasts they can listen to or types of books that they can read to really help them with even how they think about and approach problems? Yeah, that, that's a great question. So I, one book I always recommend, I, I sat in a 
seminar thing way, way back in college. And one book I recommend to you know all students is it's something called the 20 minute informational interview by a woman named Marsha. And I, I might butcher the last name, but Mar Marsha is something you can look it up. And it really understand. And what it does is it unpacks how to make the best. If you get time with an executive like yourself, Brandis, or with other folks that you're really trying to meet and understand, um, things from, that is a really good way on how to use people's time wisely in a way that feels like a mutual value exchange and really helps you get what you need in the best way. So that's the first thing I would, you know, recommend to kind of all students and folks at um, kind of this stage. As it relates to like, you know, more tangible podcasts or things that I would look at is one thing I like, I listened to this podcast called Sway by um, Kara Swisher from the New York Times. And one thing I do is I try to, when I listen to um, some of the challenges that are, that executives are facing in the industry, I try to think about how would I solve that if I were, um, you know, if I had that problem and I might not know it all, but it's a good exercise to think about. Let's say I really, you know, had this on my plate. How would I um, try to solve this? And what that does or what that's done for me is it's helped me think about a range of different things and try to put myself um, in the headspace because that's ultimately going to mirror what the interview process is going to look like as well at a lot of these companies where there where you know, there's real challenges that we might not have the answers to. And we're going to look to you to, to solve them for us. So if you already are in the headspace of how to do that and kind of wrangle that information, I think that's one way I practice, um, you know, staying up to date and problem solving across a number of, uh, you know, different things. I do the same thing that when I'm listening to that podcast, I'm like, oh, OK, they saw yeah. this, this. OK, this is great because it helps you to hear how other people are solving challenges. And it also because on like Masters of Scale and both how I built this, they are both interviewing CEOs. So it helps me think, how am I thinking about this as you know, as a CEO of a big company would think about this. So I, I love that advice. And I have never heard of that book before. So yeah. students. <laughs> That's a key. Okay, give me the give us the title of the book one more time. It's called the twenty minute informational interview. The twenty minute informational yeah. interview. Okay, yeah. that was a good key. Thank you for that, Seth. An incredible book. I, I recommend it to everyone. It's you know, it's changed how I approach everything for the last ten years. I love that. I love that. Now, how can students use their YouTube channels to attract um, employers or really set themselves? you know, apart from other candidates. Yeah, that, that's a that's another great one as well. And I would really think about this in two parts um, or, or two ways to do this. The first, um, a little bit more obvious answer is become a creator and build a community around something you're passionate about. You know, you can use those results and things you've learned to inform the interview process. In the same way you, um, you know, go through the exercise of solving problems on podcasts, you can say, I built this community or I did this thing um, that uh, resulted in X, Y, Z. Because employ employers and great hiring managers, they're not as concerned about how you got that experience as much as that you have it. So whether you were paid to do something or got the skill on a passionate side project, it's all the same. We just wanna know you know how to do the thing, not necessarily how you acquired those skills. So you can build a community and use those learnings, how about that process and doing that, and that would be incredibly impressive and you can point right to the results. The other way I would think about it is Use YouTube to educate yourself on subjects and areas you're not familiar with. You know, people, YouTube is massive, um, 2 billion, over 2 billion monthly active, I'll say that. And people are used, coming to YouTube for education, for access, entertainment, and community. And whether you want to learn about economics or finance or art or fashion or some niche trend in um, Singapore, there's probably a YouTube video that can help you unpack that. And you can start to learn about things that maybe you can't fly to this place or you don't know a person in this industry, but you can do a search on YouTube and find out a lot more. Um, so that's still what I use to this day to build perspective on things that I don't know about or areas I don't know. And I can use all of that information in my day to day to inform the interview process, um, to 
solve problems that I'm, you know, dealing with at work or in personal life. So I would look at it in those two lenses and just bring your whole self and your whole person into that process um, through things you've learned um, on the side or through YouTube or, you know, on the internet at large. I love that. Steph, you have made it so far already in your career as like partnerships lead. Is there any, like to end this, do you, is there any advice, like anything that you follow that have really helped you, um, you know, get promoted, that have really helped you get a position of lead at a company like YouTube that you would like to offer up to the HBCU students? Yeah. I, I would say just go for it. I think don't wait for permission or for somebody to say it's okay to do that thing or wait for, <clears throat> sorry, or wait for things to happen. Like I, I see the, the leaders um, at a lot of these companies and the people that inspire me and who have, are getting to places I'd like to be or see, and they're not waiting for permission for somebody to try this thing. Like if you fail, that's okay. A lot of us are failing um, in a lot of different areas, but you have to try, you learn and you, you do the thing next. So I would say that's my advice, whether it's the internship, <clears throat> um, getting a role, trying something, have confidence that you can do it. Like it, you know, nobody, you know, has all the answers. Um, people are just trying things at a high volume and getting them more right or more wrong and then honing the approach in from there. There's not a secret to it. It's just having the confidence to try it, trying it again and going for it. I think that's how I got here. Um, hopefully it'll be how I get to whatever is, you know, next someday and continuing from there. But you got to try, um, believe in yourself and um, just go for it. I love that. We're going to end yeah. there because that was perfect. That was a mic drop moment. Thank you so <laughs> much, Steph, for being here. Yeah. Thank you so much for sharing your time with the students today. We, so, we are so grateful to you. So students, yeah. you heard it. Just go for it. Just go just, for it. People yes. are just people. There are no extraordinary, like, you're just people who are going yeah. for it constantly, right? Exactly. Yes. Brand is so great to so great to see you again and be a part of this event and um, you know, more soon. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.